Hey there. So I'm sure you've heard a couple of songs where the vocals just sound so bright and so crispy and you wonder what's the magic that's going on in the vocals. Let me show you how to get it done in FL Studio using only stock plugins. If you're new, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button down below and let's get started. All right, so right here I have a beat and a vocal. Let's hear how it sounds. Um, this is just the beat, the vocal, no processing running on it, no pre-processing, please. I know some of you have asked before if I pre-process my vocals, when recording, this is without any single effect on the vocal. So let's hear and see how it sounds. Make a call for like it to look at. Tell me what you did, my Fatima. Make a call for like it to look at. Tell me what you did, my Fatima. Make you go to the places you never go before. Mm -hmm. Make you do all the things you will never do before. Make you try all the things you will never try before. Make you go to the places you never go before. So now this vocal is recorded with an inexpensive microphone, the Beringa C1, I think. So it doesn't matter if you have an expensive mic or a cheap mic, you can still get really good sounding vocal mixes, all right? So there's a very easy way to do it using the vocal preset that I just released on my website. You can get it with the link in the description below. Right here we have the vocals, all right? So I'm just going to drag the presets. The preset is in here, the mixer presets, Institute, vocal, mixing, template. There's a whole template you can get where you can just drag and drop your vocals into the templates or you can just drag and drop the presets, all right? So now, for example, this is the lead vocals, okay? We have for harmonies, chants, backup, and ambient vocals, okay? So I'm just going to drag and drop the lead vocals on my vocal track. And then let's see how it sounds now. But of course, we need to change the key of the song because the vocals was recorded in E flat. And then now let's see how it sounds. Now let's hear it again. Make a call for like it to look at. To me, watch it in my Fatima. Make a call for like it to look at. To me, watch it in my Fatima. Make you go to the places you never go before. Mm -hmm. Make you do all the things you will never do before. Make you try all the things you will. All right, so let's go through these effects like the vocal chain and see how that make our vocal sound crispy, all right, and cut through the mix. So, of course, tuning, tuning does not add any brightness or, you know, texture aside from tuning the vocal. So it doesn't really count, but let's make sure your vocal is well tuned, of course. So I'm, so I'm going to skip tuning. So now the most important part, or one of the most important parts we should look out for is compression. And compression, for some reasons, a lot of people just mess up compression in your vocals. Either they over compress or they don't compress enough that the vocal still sounds so dynamic. So you have to make sure your compression is good, that it's able to control the dynamic range of your vocal to make it sound more consistent. Like for example, if you look at this vocal right here, you can see this, this first half right here. It looks like it's a bit small, right? Then it looks like it keeps increasing over time. And then right here again, this looks a lot more consistent, but you can see some drop off on the wave, on the waveform right here. Let me make it bigger. All right. Of course, it's not the most ideal way to measure dynamic range in a sound, but this is just a more visual way that you can easily understand, especially for beginners, all right? So to show you what can happen when you compress properly, right? I'm going to turn off all the other effects, all right? Then we're going to look at the before and the after compression. So let's listen to this portion of the song. This is with compression. Make a call for like it to look at. Tell me what you did, my Fatima. Make a call for like it to look at. Without compression. Make a call for like it to look at. Tell me what you did, my Fatima. Make a call for like it to look at. Let me solo it. Make a call for like it to look at. Tell me what you did, my Fatima. Make a call for like it to look at. Then turn it on. Make a call for like it to look at. So you can see it really keeps the vocal sounding balanced and level, right? It reduces the inconsistency in, in the dynamic range. So you want to make sure that you have that under control. So a good compression setting helps. And typically for most times when I mix vocals, I do use the ratio within 
four to five ratio one, all right? And I do his dress should below 20, okay? I don't usually go, you know, beyond minus 20 dB. I usually keep it below, that is maybe minus 15, minus 10, minus 17, depends on how loud or how the vocal comes, all right? And you may need to do some makeup game. When you compress, sometimes you may lose some loudness, okay? So you just add a little bit of gain to compensate for the loss of loudness, all right? So then, of course, the attack and the release, you want a fast attack, I usually do below 10 milliseconds. And then for the release, I usually do below 200 milliseconds, all right? So now let's move on to EQ. And this is another very easy part that a lot of people still do mess up, because when they EQ, either the vocal starts sounding too thin, or it has it sounds too boxy, it sounds hollow. Now, this microphone that we use, C1, a lot of people think that, of course, it's an inexpensive microphone. Amateurs use it a lot because of the price range, but that shouldn't stop you from having a great vocal recording or a great vocal mix. Because when you know how to use EQ and compression, there's a lot you can control, there's a lot you can shape and sculpt from virtually any decent microphone, all right? What's going on right here is that we just did some cuts in the low end, and depends on the kind of microphone you use, right? So microphones do have a lot of presence in them, like the Rode NC2A, NC1A, Neumanns, right? They do have a lot of presence in them. So you may need to cut up to like 150 hertz in the low end. But for this mic, it does not have a lot of low end, right? So we just cut up to like about 100 hertz, 95 hertz, around that range, all right? And then this notch is right here, just how we take out the nasal frequencies, because you don't want that in your mix. It helps clean up your vocal mix or more. So I'm going to turn you off so you hear the difference with and without the EQ. So this is without the EQ. Make a go for like it to nuke. Tommy watch it in Fatima. Make a go for like it to nuke. Tommy watch. This is with the EQ now. Make a go for like it to nuke. Tommy watch it in Fatima. Make a go for like it to nuke. Tommy watch it in Fatima. So it sounds so much cleaner and you can hear less nasal or boxy frequencies just because of this um cut right here and to just get nasal frequency out of you all you have to do is just take it a notch right sweep across the frequency where you hear something like this make a go for like it to nuke to me watch it ma fatima make a go for like it to nuke so wherever you hear that ringing frequency right wherever it sounds most obvious then you just simply drag it down right here make a go for like it but do not go all the way down here this may be Make a go for like it. This may be too excessive, so you just want to do it just a little bit right like this. Make a go for like it to nuke. Tommy watch it in my Fatima. Make a go for like it to nuke. And that's why the mixing presets that I did and the templates I did is so effective because these are things that may take some of your time, especially when you're new to mixing that you may not really understand yet. It solves that problem for your compression and EQ, which is the very basics, because if you don't get those right, there's nothing you can do to fix your mix if you don't get your compression and EQ right. So the vocal mixing template really helps you save a lot of time and gives you really, really good results. So right here is the multi-band compression. And multi-band compression is, can, be can be terrifying for a lot of beginners, but it's really easy to use. In fact, it's a preset in there we're going to use. So multi-band compression is just kind of like an EQ and a compressor all bundled up in one. That is the easiest way I can explain it that you understand, all right? Because you can actually control the dynamic range of different frequencies. Unlike a regular compressor, right? In a regular compressor, you can only control the dynamic range of the entire sound coming in, all right? That is including the low frequencies and the high frequencies all bundled up in one. It controls all of it, but with multi-band compressor, it splits it into different bands, low frequencies, mid frequencies, and high frequencies. And then it tries to control the dynamic range of each of these um, frequency range, all right? And that can help make your vocal mix sound really good. Like for example, the presets used is just the bright um, preset right here. Make a go for like it to nuke. So it has this shine because it increases the brightness in the high band, right? But at the same time, it compresses so it doesn't sound too harsh or excessive in the ears, all right? Because you want to make sure that your vocals do not start sounding harsh. That's a balance you have to try to get when making your vocals bright and cultural mix. You want it to sound bright, but at the same time, not harsh or irritating to the ear. Make a go for like it to nuke. To me watch it in my Fatima. Again, a little bit in the preset, again, it's turned down a little bit, right? Because I did tweak it to how I typically use them for most of my vocal mixes. Make a go for like it to nuke. To me watch it in my Fatima. Make a go for like it to nuke. And then when I turn it off, you hear it sounding a more dull and boxy now. Make a go for like it to nuke. To me watch it in my Fatima. When I turn it back on. Make a go for like it to nuke. 
Tomiwa Chedima Fatima. So this can help add some brightness and give you a little bit of that analog warmth, even though this is a digital plugin, can help give you a little bit of that analog feel to your vocals. All right. And then the next thing I use right here is a stereo enhancer. Now this may be a little bit controversial to some people because some people may argue that it doesn't work or it works, but in my experience, it does work. So what the stereo enhancer does is that it takes the signal coming in and tries to spread it across. And this helps make your vocal sit better in the mix from what I've been working on the last couple of months. It helps make your vocal sit properly in the mix. So if I were to take it off, I think you heard it better when I play, it, when I play the beats with the mix. Let's see. Now this is with it. Make a call for like it to look at. Tommy watch it in Fatima. Make a call for like it to look at. Tommy watch it in Fatima. Vibes and inshallah. Then this is without it. Make a call for like it to look at. Tommy watch it in Fatima. Make a call for like it to look at. Tommy watch it in Fatima. So. If you can hear the difference, right, it sounds too concentrated and up in your face, but the stereo enhancer helps spread it out a little bit to help fill out the space, okay, make it sound more part of the beat, okay? Make a call for like it to look at. Tommy watch it in my Fatima. Make a call for like it to look at. Tommy watch it in my Fatima. So you may need to listen to this part over and over again to really hear the difference, but that little difference really does matter, and that's what makes a great mix. The little changes, the little differences can make or break a mix. All right, so the next thing right here we have is the post EQ. Because when you're done adding the effects and processing, some frequencies that you may not want may come in or they may be lost. Okay, so the post EQ will help you adjust and compensate for changes. All right, so right here we did a little bit of dip in the high frequency, right? Here, because it was beginning to sound a little bit harsh. All right, so let's play it. This is without it. Make a call for like it to look at. Tommy watch it in my Fatima. Make a call for like it to look at. This is with it. Make a call for like it to look at. Tommy watch it in my Fatima. Make a call for like it to look at. Tommy watch it in my Fatima. Vibes and inshallah. You can see how much cleaner it sounds with the EQ. So you can get this vocal mixing template and the preset that comes with them because it includes both for vocals and even for beats as well the complete because it comes with the vocals if you just want to focus on vocals or the complete if you want vocals melodies drums to so all of that right it's going to help you solve all your problems for mixing okay if you found this tutorial helpful don't forget to leave me with a thumbs up so other people that need helpful videos like this can easily find it right here on youtube i remain sir classy see you soon cheers